Well, hello. I'm in my living room today. I not completely cleaned up, but well enough for this. And you are lucky this even happened because uh, just trying out the audio, I was going to use my lapel mic and uh, tried it out, put, plugged in the camcorder, everything worked, pulled it out, and the tip of the plug stayed in the camcorder. So I spent this afternoon trying to find somebody, you know, I, I know people, uh, who, who could pull that tip out because uh, it would not record sound. The camcorder still thought it had had a, a microphone plugged into it. So uh, that was a merry adventure for this afternoon. And now this video is late, but I'm recording it. I'm using, hopefully it's working, using my Yeti mic. And I want to show you my pen collection. Now I want you to keep in mind, this is a plethora of pens. This is more pens than any person needs. And uh, happy to say that pens don't take up a lot of space, but uh, yeah, I was surprised when I organized the whole thing and said, holy cow. So uh, I've already been criticized for it. I'll sh I'm sure I'll be criticized some more. So in no particular order, I'm just gonna take you through. I have them grouped. Uh, I'll show you my least grouped case first and work away on from there. And hopefully you'll see a few uh, reviews to come. And um, I've had two offers of some collaborative videos. So uh, anybody who's, in, for those people, this may actually come in handy too, just to see what I have as a collection. Uh, so yeah, this isn't something I usually share with people in this depth. I usually just share one pen at a time when people say, well, how many do you have? I say, oh, more than I need. <laughs> How true that is. So, let's take a look at them. Okay. Oops. Almost pulled the microphone out of onto the floor. Uh, this is not how I wanted to arrange all this, so bear with me. But here's a part of my collection, and then I got another one. So, let's take a look at this case first. Uh, I'm probably going to run through some of these and just show you highlight pens more than anything, because... This could turn into a really boring, here's my Duke pen, here's my Monami Olika, and yeah, it'd be awful. But here's some Pilots, uh, of particular note here, Pilot Metropolitan. I don't use it very often, but it's one of my recommend, it's going to be in my top 10 list. Uh, of course, my Pilot Justice, oh, I'm sorry, not my Pilot Justice, my Pilot 8, Custom 823, a great writing pen. Uh, 92, 923 with a Falcon nib, which was been in pens and used recently, and also a Pilot Justice, which I thought I had grabbed and I didn't. Uh, also a very unique nib. Uh, out of these pens, these are, uh, this is actually a Pilot body with a Wing Sung nib, if that makes any sense. And then this, oops. Uh, sorry, I just realized that this pen case was pushing on the microphone. Uh, and then this is a tulip pen, which I think is kind of cool looking. I mean, the writing is nothing special, but it looks cool. And it's cheap. Uh, I'm going to be doing some top 10 lists this year. I think, if I had reviewed them already, some combination of these two would be in one of my top 10 lists. Um... I'm very impressed with Pen BBS. I was not so impressed with the nib on one of them, although I am getting it to work. Uh, I'll update you on that after the new year. This is a unique pen. This is a Hero. I reviewed it a long time ago. It's a Hero uh, th 3266. And here's what makes... I have actually is inked up right now if I was doing a pens in use today. You ever seen a nib like that? You can write with this pen at just about any angle, like a 360 degrees. Very, very unique pen. Uh, not a particularly great writer, which is why you don't see it in pens in use, but it's in my collection because it's an oddity. Now here is a good writer. This is a hero. Um, these are all heroes right here. H718. Oops, where's the nib? Oops, that's how you fill it. Sorry. Wow. It's a retractable nib, which is kind of neat. It's sort of like a safety pen. 
but it isn't. Uh, my biggest, it writes beautifully, my biggest complaint I've had with it is a limited ink capacity. And then some other wing songs. Uh, this one, 618, is actually going to be in one of my top 10 lists this year. Uh, right at the moment, it's my daily writer. No, did I say 619? I meant 698. Oddly enough, I can't keep these all memorized. But anyway, very nice writer. For what it is. This is another pen I really like, although I hear on for some people this cap is, or this clip is loose. I haven't had that problem. I did have a Keiko Retro. I did have a problem with this pen. I think it showed you Keiko Edge Split. That was going to be a contender for a top 10 list until that happened. And then one last pen. I don't even know what it is. So I threw it with wing songs. This is one that was just given to me in a batch, and uh, I had it out to review it. And I just, oh, it's a wing song, I think, because it's got lucky. Anyway, I, I thought I'd review it. But, I don't know, it's not really my type of pen. So I've not inked it up. But that's not a pen I bought. Uh, actually, there's... Several pens here I did not buy. That's uh, one of the hazards of being a pen reviewer is people give you pens. <laughs> um, on this side, nothing too special. I have some Jin Hao's. Uh, this is a Jin Hao pocket pen. This is an awesome Jin Hao 51A. Another contender for a top 10. This is a Jin Hao something or other. These two were given to me. Uh, this is a Beauty 8001. Uh, the writing with it isn't particularly special hooded nib but it's a very unique looking pen that's why I kept it uh, this is Lingmo Lorelei uh, very nice pen it's kind of I love the finish and it writes well as a bonus I like it a lot better than the uh, demonstrator version of this pen and then a couple more oddities again this was given to me a, I don't know much about it and then this one is a, well, it's actually a review I filmed, and then now I've got to refilm it because it was on that hard drive that failed. But, ooh. Oh, nothing. <laughs> Sorry, I thought there was something growing on the feed, but there isn't. It was just some tissue paper that didn't get cleaned off properly. Anyway, it's a Tatum 717. Uh, I have more information on it, thanks to an alert viewer, which, uh, since I have to refilm the review, I guess I'll just put that information right in the review. And then a squirrel pen that... Deli? Anyway, somebody gave it to me because it's got a squirrel on it. It's a fountain pen. Uh, and then these down here combination of given to me and just other pens that I have this I don't even know what this one is this is a Lombato something or other this is a one of the uh, Safari look-alikes only this is a Morgren I like the color though this one I bought this is a Moon Man Mini I like it uh, I need to ink it up again but it's an eyedropper nice little pocket pen very attractive pocket pen, too. Uh, and it holds its seal very well. I had the ink in it for a long time. And it never dried up. This is a vintage pen. I don't know anything about it. I like it. It's very definitely for the Chinese market, not for the U.S. market, because there's nothing written in English on it. It's all in Chinese. Uh bent nib type pen so this will show up in pens and use one of these days and of course I can't remember if that was working or not and then you, you've seen these before uh, uh, this one I like a lot this is a crocodile writes really well and it's gorgeous 
you know, this is, these are other, some other really nice well-made pens that you'll be seeing soon in review. This one I've reviewed. This was sent to me by a viewer. Um, yeah, so that's some of my pens. If you're going to go on like this the whole video, well, maybe. <laughs> I told you, it's a view of my pen collection for what it's worth. Now, this set has uh, some of my Central European pets. Uh, the, these are all Central pens from Czechoslovakia. Yes, I know, Czechoslovakia doesn't exist anymore. It's now Czech, Pub Czech Republic. But they were made in Czechoslovakia when it was still a going concern. This is the one that got me started on the path. My uh, amazing Central Pen 100820 with the incredible nib. Uh, this is feels like you're using a paintbrush. And I was surprised myuberpens.com recently sold some more of these. Turns out they all went to viewers of this channel. So I'm really happy about that. This is a student Central Pen. Uh, would have been reviewed by now, but uh, I need another cartridge for it. So, uh, yeah, either cartridge or figure out a converter that fits it. And then, uh, whoops, I missed. And then this is, uh, I forget what this is called. Um, there was some discussion over what country it was made in, too. I'll have to look that up, but I'm just not ringing a bell right now. These are both Norwegian-made pens. Pawn 52 and a Pawn, I forget what this one's called. I like, of course, the finish on this is a lot like a Parker Vacuumatic. Both have very nice nibs. Just wonderful pens. Button fillers, very well made. Uh, sadly, Pawn is no longer with us. And the pa Norwegian Pawn is often confused. There was one in uh, the main continent of Europe. They weren't really very connected at all, but uh, anyway, the, there was a Norwegian pen maker called Pon, which is kind of neat. Down here, a few more oddities. I've got a, what is this, Swan maybe Todd? I forget what it's called. Oh, just Swan, self-filler. Oh, Swan maybe Todd and Company. Wow, I was right. As I remember, oh yeah. Very nice writer. Sort of a cursive italic. Very, just a nice pen. Very solid feeling. This is an oddity. I got in a trade with a gentleman in Norway. Uh, it's a Phoenix. It's a prototype. It was never actually released. He had no nib in it when he bought it. So when he traded, you know, we traded some pens back and forth. He installed, a, I think it's a Knox nib in it. I need to get on the stick and review this one as is or do a video or something what i want to use is those uh, re, one of those re-entry nibs from the nema sign i think that would be swell and it's a good writer i mean maybe it'll be ruined by putting the nema sign nib on i'll go back to this or is it namas eh whatever uh my monte grappa fortuna the only monte grappa i own uh two deltas i have a delta Masterpiece, which uh, now that I think now that's kind of an odd name for a pen, and then a Delta Serena, which uh, I repaired. I had actually broken off this bit of the barrel, the part with the threads. I mean, like it just snapped off almost, it sheared off. And I recently repaired it with some super glue. I was like, yeah, so that's back in service. Uh, of course, this. The masterpiece has a little bit of pseudoscience to it because that's a silly idea there. If they just would have marketed it as a steel nib with some gold decoration, dandy, but they made weird claims about it. Uh, recently did a first impression of the Mirage and then, of course, my Visconti Homo sapiens. So some Italian pens have some more Italians over here. Uh, the infamous Stipula which uh, I'm working on some options. I've got a uh, couple recommendations of places to go to get that writing better. Although I've got it to the point it's good enough, but not what it could be. A Columbus 65, which is a nice 1960s 
sort of like an Aurora 88. Very flexible nib. A little stingy with the ink flow, but flexible nib. Um, then we have my Auroras. I have an Aurora, two Aurora 88s, the old fashioned kind, and an Aurora 88 pencil. These have incredible nibs. This one's the better of the two. And Aurora Duo Cart, modern one. Modern Aurora 88, Aurora style, Omaso Giva cocktail. And then down here, um, these are some more Chinese pens. Uh, I forget why they're here. Probably because they didn't fit in the other case. Um, of these, none I'm particularly super excited about. Except this one. This is a Wing Sung. Uh, is it 233? Like a Triumph nib on it, but it's a very good writer. Uh, I'm hoping to film a review on that soon. And then some others. Most of these were given to me. In fact, everything here was given to me except for that one. And over here, this is unique. I should, oops, I should film a video on this one soon. This is a Turkish pen. It's a Scrix 418. Steel nib. You know, nothing too amazing. But quite a, quite a good pen. And it holds an amazing seal. Uh, that's another one that I need to refilm thanks to that hard drive failure. Okay, again, I'm not going to go through every single pen here. Just pull out a couple of the interesting ones. So here are two U.S.-made pens. This is a, uh, a Well Sharp. Uh, what makes this one kind of... It was made in Providence, Rhode Island, apparently. What makes this one kind of unique, besides being small, hey, it's a glass nib. Those never really caught on, and after writing with it, I can see why. This is a pen I restored yesterday. Because I want it, I have not written with it yet. I'm saving it for first impression. And yet I'll tell you how hard that is. Uh, yeah, the ring's a little loose here, but we'll live. This pen probably won't leave the house. But this is a Welsh pen, uh, made by the same company as Welsh Sharp, as far as I can tell. Uh, has a, you know, some wear and tear to it on it. It's not a particularly, yes, the furnace is on, but I'm upstairs, so it won't be as loud. It's not a particularly uh, amazing pen, as near as I can tell. Um, but it looks kind of cool. And, you know, it should be writing again. It, at least it sucks up water and holds it. Um, two Wall Ever Sharps. This is a modern Skyliner 50. This is a 1930s Skyline. Uh, this one has quite an amazing flex. I did a video on that recently. Uh, my only Conklin, this is a Conklin word gauge. You know, I've been kind of interested in their uh, Duraflex or is it Omniflex, whatever their flex nib is called. But not interested enough to actually buy one. Someday, maybe. I'm, I don't know, it's hard to, I, there are some modern pens I want that just isn't one that particularly excites me. And then I have a Twisby 580 aluminum. It's I like Twisby. I just don't have a lot of them for whatever reason, really. Uh, then I have my Noodlers. Uh, this year there will be no Noodlers in my top ten list. Sorry, Noodlers fans. Uh, and I'm looking at downsizing what I have here. I want these aren't pens. I'm probably going to sell. They'll just be ones I give to people. Um, the only one I'm really excited about is this Boston safety pen. This is a true safety pen. Eyedropper and all that. You know, the Conrads. 
don't know why I have so many, to be honest. I, I went through a spell where I just thought Noodler's Conrads were amazing, and uh, I don't think so anymore. Uh, I'm going to keep one or two around for reasons. I love the finish on this one. That Forbidden City finish is just gorgeous. And uh, these two are kept around for specific tasks. This one is a Noodler's Ahab, which is used for one specific ink that's really not fountain pen friendly. And then this Noodler's Nippon set I want. It, they've never been sold in the Solomon Silver finish. I want it from Nathan Tardiff himself. He included a personal note with it, so... This is actually where I got my start on pen reviewing. Not where I got my start on buying pens. Where I got my start on the reviewing. Over on this side. Oh, Voyage to Japan. I have a Platinum Preppy, which I don't know why it's in the pen case. Usually I just keep them in the drawer. Blue. Oh, I know why, because the top ten list. <laughs> Platinum Cool. Cool. Uh, I'm doing an experiment with the glittery ink in it. Uh, platinum Placer. Um, all my Platinum 3776s, which... Uh, I, that's one of the videos I'll be doing over this break, is about the Platinum 3776. Last spring, May 7th, actually, I filmed part one. Uh, and then I was uncapping one per month and just seeing how they wrote. And... Uh, but unfortunately that preliminary footage has been lost thanks to that hard drive failure that I caused by dropping it on the floor. So I'm going to have to figure that out, how I'm going to film that. Uh, also, I'm planning an experiment with this one because this is my least favorite of the bunch. Uh, I'm going to do a longer term ink it up and store it. Maybe for a full year, maybe I'll try to test out their two year claim, we'll see. And then I, of course, the Platinum President. I love the Platinum President. If I were to buy another Platinum pen, you know, the President would be tempting, you know, maybe in a different nib size. I really find the Platinum Izumo very eye-catching. My bank account doesn't agree with me, so i uh, probably not be buying one of them, but they are attractive. Down here, some other interesting pens. This is a particularly interesting one. Uh, this is a Japanese pen. I bought it on Etsy. It's uh, All I know about is it was made by what they called a Japanese craftsman. If I had better light up here, which I don't because this really isn't my pen set, uh, you'd be able to see that there, you can see the sack inside of it and it's almost like a demonstrator. It's just a not an amazing writer, it's an okay writer, but a very pretty pen. And I'm quite thrilled to have it. Um, and then I have, wow, this random dollar pen, which, interesting. And then these are uh, my Sailors, um, Fude Nib, uh, Sailor Regulus, which, that's one of the pens I could easily, I could happily downsize. Uh, I don't use it. Very 70s looking, though, which is why it appealed to me. Um, and then uh, some more platinum, or, uh, sailors this is i don't know oh these are all different kinds of indian pens over here some of them were given to me actually all the indian pens here were given to me except for that one i bought that one um and then i have another sailor with a food a nib but you know, the dang thing is so long it argh. <laughs> getting through it I need a drink of water, though. All right, I'm glad I thought ahead to set that glass of water there. Uh, when I teach, I usually have water right there because I need it. So here we're back, um, some Parker pens, uh, two Parker sonnets. One of them purchased in Fargo, North Dakota. Parker Vacuumatic, Parker Dual Fold Modern, Parker Dual Fold Old, Parker Dual Fold Old Pencil, Parker dual fold economy which at one time i thought was a parker challenger uh, another parker dual fold except it's called a parker slimline so it's kind of the uk version parker 45 parker 21 parker 51 parker uh, frontier 
Parker Jotter, Parker Vector, which the madness actually began with a pen just like this Parker Vector back in fourth grade. We got a pen catalog in the mail uh, full of fountain pens and I fell in love. But the only one I could actually afford was a Parker Vector, which I didn't buy from the catalog. I bought it at a local store and lost it during one of my moves, so this isn't even that original pen. But 10 years old, and that's when the fountain pen love affair started. And I'm 43 now, so you might get some idea how I've amassed a collection. Um, these are my Schaefer pens. Uh, of them, I've reviewed the Schaefer Balance. I uh, would like to review, review, review those two. This one is another one that's going to be fun to review. This is a Snorkel. So I'll save the snorkeling. Oh, what the heck. This is fun. See? Then you don't have to get your nip dirty. So we'll do a full fill when I film its review. Oh, boy. I'm relying on daylight for this. My studio lights are downstairs because I just didn't want to haul them upstairs. And like I said, I was going to film this earlier in the day, but events happened with the stoop. Sorry, I'm being bitter. With the microphone cord. Yay. Majestic, glorious American pen. Uh, I mean, the nib is no great shakes, but very attractive pen. This is one of my early restoration jobs. Uh... There's quite a number of the vintage pens here that are actually restoration jobs. Uh, usually, you know, if it's like this, it's easy to resack. I have a, a restoration job I'll be filming once I get uh, everything back downstairs put together. Or maybe I'll do it in the kitchen. We'll see. Uh, just to give you an idea how I do it. A Tucker Sharp, which actually, once I cleaned the goo off of it, was in pretty good shape. Now, you know, it's a nice U.S.-made pen. It's nothing, again, nothing too special. Um, Schrade Tactical Fountain Pen, which apparently they no longer sell them. Just sad. Um, I had to go in character as a zombie apocalypse survivor. Now that zombies are losing their luster in uh, the media, you know, Walking Dead has kind of run its course. Uh... I don't know. It's coming up on time to do a re-review, so I got to think up either something clever because I left it at a, on a cliffhanger, or uh, I don't know. Well, I got to think about that one. A Retro Fifty One, Ag Spalding and Company, which is actually a really nice pen, and I don't know why I don't write with it more often. I mean, it doesn't look like anything, but it I like writing with it, so I should ink it up more often. Just a simple cartridge converter pen. You know, who would have thought A.G. Spalding even made a fountain pen? I thought they made baseball gloves. Uh, this is a oddity. Chris Rat 52 actually gave this one to me. This is a... Uh, is it a pencil? Or is it a pen? Ooh. Haven't quite worked out the manufacturer, but... Anyway... This one is a Rexall drug pen, so, you know, made for Rexall drugs. And then a ballpoint made by a student who, at the time, was an 8th grader. Now he's a senior in high school. He does still make pens, but he does a much nicer job. And he makes fountain pens, too, so uh, I might have to buy one before he graduates. Down here. These are all Waterman's pens, Hemisphere, Taperite, Karen, and a 52. The 52 is from Chris Rapp, 52. wonder if the 52 is related to the pen. And then uh, my various assorted Esther Brooks. Um, this one was a gift from Chris Rapp, 52. These two actually were from somebody I knew back when I lived in a town, West Hope. Uh, this lady had died, and her family knew I liked fountain pens, so they found these in her house and uh, gave them to me. And, uh, yeah, that's some more of my restoration work. This Esther book was actually one of my first restoration jobs because uh, the uh, J-Bar broke almost right away, 
And so uh, I had to learn how to replace a J-bar. Okay. Yeah, definitely losing my light. Better hurry. So now we'll bring out the big daddy case. <laughs> okay. Can't get too close because uh, then you can't see the pens. This is all my Lamy's. Uh, Lamy 2000s. I have a Lamy uh, Dialogue 3, Lamy All Star, Lamy Safari, uh, Lamy Ion, which is a great pen, two vintage Lamy's, uh, and a Lamy, whatever that's called, drawn a blank. The kid's pen, anyway. This is here is a Super Rotat. Uh, kind of a just a nice functional piston German made pen down here my Cavecos uh, one of my favorite pens right here is the Caveco V14S I mean and I'm not joking I love this pen this could be a daily writer it doesn't look like much but wow this one is similar to it, but has a, a lot more flex on its nib. Uh, this one's a, is it a 31 or 32? I forget. Um, well, who cares? Figure it out later. Got to race the setting sun now. Caveco Lilliput. Um, nice pocket pen, but then I realized that buying a pocket pen like that kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> uh, this is a Caveco... Um, Stonewash All Sport. This is a Caveco Sport, which I, you know, is a pocket pen. This is a Caveco Dia, a vintage one from the 30s. This is a Caveco Dia 2, the modern version. And over here, two Reform pens, which is a German make. Over on this side, let's see if I can get this monstrosity out of the way here. Without kicking the microphone too much. Okay, I am setting the microphone on the pen case, so uh, remind me before I knock it over. Uh, so these are my Senator pens. Uh, I like them all. Some of them I've had to restore. Some I bought from my Uber pens. One was given to me. I. Uh, haven't reviewed them much because I don't know much about them. I can't find model information. I should just re do the reviews anyway. Uh, this is my Pelican collection, all the way from uh, you know, some nice 1970s models, uh, 1950s, a modern one, another modern one. Uh, down here, luckily I remembered the microphone. Uh, these are some more these this actually I thought I was just buying the green one I got two of these this is a Buehler I think I can't make it out in this light anymore we'll go with that anyway got two for the for why I thought I was getting one uh, here these are what are they oh Mont Blanc two Mont Blancs one's a Monterosa one is a what, a 32? I don't remember. I'm rushing. Over here, I have a Giha Boy. I have a Atlatus. Uh, what's this one? I forgot. I know I liked it. Okay, so now you're running into my memory thing. Yeah, I don't remember what its brand is, and it's too dark for me to make it out. Uh, I'll remember later. This was from a viewer. This is an interesting uh, Kreutzer. Just kind of a nice minimalistic pen, and writes well. Uh, so I suppose this is my Oddities. What, is that what this is? This is a uh, Aromas. Don't know much about them. Another piston filler. Yeah, you can pick. If, if you're willing to, you know, not buy, like, the mainstream brands, you can get pretty low-cost pens on eBay. That's part of how I've built up this collection. <laughs> I get the weird stuff. 
Uh, this one is a, what is it? Gert Long, I think. I can't really make it out. Another very nice pen, piston filler. Best. And then on this side, figure out how I'm going to do this. Okay, I have, th these are some of my East German pens back when there was in East Germany. Uh, some Garant, uh, Marcant, which is, I was very proud of this pen. It's, it's okay, writer, it's not amazing. Um, and then over here I have an arrow, which is, I want to say that's a, I can't remember if that's Danish or Dutch. Top of my head, I can't, it's not coming to me. This one doesn't fit anywhere, so it just kind of rolls around loose, which is annoying. And I see that's probably where it's getting its dirt from. Uh, Rotring Core. Then down here, Inoxcrom, which is a Spanish brand. I recently had the offer of a Portuguese pen from a viewer, although uh, he said that the flea market didn't have any that day. And I said, oh, what will I owe you? And he said, do not worry about it. They're cheap. So I'm not sure what that means. Uh, this feels like a very high quality pen. I'm looking forward to unveiling it in a first impressions because I want to use the dang thing. Uh, Cora, which is a wonderful, wonderful pen uh, from the Netherlands. I had some help from a viewer locating its backstory it writes amazingly i have two selectors this one is a review i really should film but don't want to because i don't enjoy writing with this pen um, this one again if you're willing to do a little elbow grease this is another selector uh, i'm kind of excited to write with it you know it just looks amazing <laughs> Uh, Marshall, which is a nice pen. I want to say I reviewed it, but I may have just done uh, pens in use with it. And then a Penal, which is a Danish brand. And finally, you thought this would never end, right? Uh, okay, this is. I'm going to have to hold this. Um, I have a Conqueror, which I know I've done work on the pen. I think I've I think this one I just put a new sack in it is all. Uh, I'm not sure if I've reviewed it though, so I will check. Uh, this, these are two Hungarian pens. This one is a Pax. The other one is a, a Prima 61. Uh, these are some Soviet pens of various flavors. Um, I don't think I've reviewed any of them yet. And down here... I have reviewed two of these pens. This is a Tolls Pencala. These are all three of these are Croatian. This is the Moster Pencala. This, I believe, is from the same company. Uh, this is a cartridge filler. I'm not sure how old it is, whether it is a modern pen or if it's vintage. But it was cheap, so what the heck. I think I mentioned I picked up four pen collars for $60, so that's one of them. The other two arrived today, but I haven't gotten them out, so I don't know what they're like yet. I was kind of panicked over the camera. <laughs> so, pens took second place. Uh, Bulgarian pens, Vitosha and a Pobeda, or Pobeda, something like that. Uh, Vitosha is my very first piston filler fix, and I loved writing with that. Once I figured out how to do it, because it does have kind of an odd grind on the nib, I love that pen. And it was cheap. Uh, um, Sty Pen Up, which is a French. Another oddity. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Where's the nib? Oop, there it is. Uh, the thing with this one, I found it very difficult to clean. I see it oozed a little while in storage. It's also, uh, so apparently I didn't clean it as well as I thought, which means I was even worse than I thought. Um, and it dried out so quickly. So it wasn't terribly impressive. And then finally, a uh, Polish pen, an Inco, 
Uh, I've wanted a Polish pen and got one. So that was pretty exciting. And it writes decently well. I won't claim it was amazing, but it does write well. So I'm doing my best with lighting. I'm sorry. Uh, like I said, I planned to film this much earlier, but with the microphone disaster, it just did not happen. Um, but what you can see is the result of several years of purchasing pens, um, organizing them, willing to, to use some elbow grease and clean pens, being willing to, uh, you know, search around. Uh, you know, that Pelican, not a pen I expected to own because they're absurdly expensive, but then I bought it in this box, a little cheap cardboard sleeve, and got it quite a lot cheaper. So, uh, you know, if you're willing to look for discounts, that uh, same thing with that Parker uh, Dual Fold. Not a pen I ever thought I would own, but I shopped around a little. Found it. So, uh, yeah, it, and you know, when I say shopped around a little, I mean, when I was 10 years old, I wanted one. And finally, I'm 43 years old, and I got one, so I only had to wait 33 years to get it. So, uh, anyway, I guess the lesson from this, you know, do things you enjoy. Uh, you've seen my book collection. Uh, now you've seen my fountain pen collection. Um, it is growing. You may have noticed empty spaces in the cases. That's a lesson I learned. You know, I used to be like, oh, got to be efficient. Then you buy a new pen, and you're like, oh, uh, got to reorganize them all. So I left space and be willing to to sell or prune or trade if the opportunity presents itself. Uh, I have done that. Give away, that's a big one for me, especially with lower cost pens. I, uh, I find it satisfying to introduce people to fountain pens. Uh, and it's fun to give people stuff. You know, I, I'm not, you know, here, have my Pelican M800. No, not going to happen. But, you know, I do it with uh, a lot of the pens. And, uh, Honestly, is there anything there I would not be willing to sell at the right price? Okay, maybe the Central Pen 100820. I kind of like that one a lot. Maybe the Molster Pen Kala. But, you know, basically, even the ones I've worked on, I could be talked into selling if somebody offered the right price. And I'm not, this isn't a marketing video or anything. I'm just saying that as a general collecting thing, you know, don't get too attached to them. Um there might be something better uh, to me my favorite thing is to discover these pens that like the vitosha that nobody's heard of that unless they're from bulgaria or that area you know just not a very well-known brand uh, there turns out there were a lot of german pen makers uh, so i own several of them uh, some of these soviet pens or that inko from poland i not particularly wonderful pens but they're unique and that's part of the thrill for me. The other part of the thrill for me is when I get a chance to repair a pen. Now, my philosophy on pen repair, which you will see in the upcoming video, I don't restore them to like new con condition because I figure they are used pens. I restore them to working condition and uh, call it good. So anyway, that gave you a look at what I have for pens. Uh, I have some restoration projects coming, but I think this video has gone on long enough. Um, but look for a restoration pen video and some top tens coming and uh, I will be back in my regular set. The living room is clean and the, I've been vacuuming down in the set so that'll be clean again. So uh, I'm not that you'll see any difference, but I'll be better lit than this and I'll have a green screen again. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye bye. Oh, and happy new year.